Hey everybody, welcome to Breakfast All Day. Christy Alonzo uh, getting caught up from some of last week's movies, including uh, Kristen Stewart as Seberg. Kristen Stewart is Gene Seberg. She is indeed. So this does something which I ordinarily like in a biopic in mm-hmm. that it does not try to encompass the entirety of a famous person's life sure. from cradle to grave. Those tend to be superficial and kind of rushed. And and this does not do that. This does what I, I ordinarily really like, which is taking a, a pivotal segment of that person's life and examining mm-hmm. how that shaped them into who they would ultimately become. Like, the Motorcycle Diaries does that really well with oh, Che Guevara, totally. yeah, for yeah, example. Yeah. So um, Lincoln. Yes. Yeah, so this is about Gene Seberg's time after Breathless. Mm-hmm. Like she's already famous and she is politically active and she uses her celebrity to shine a light on what the Black Panthers are doing. Yes. And gets involved with one of them played by Anthony Mackie. And, um, and it's how she comes under investigation by the FBI because of it and how it does damage to her marriage and her family and her career. And yet she is insistent on fighting for a cause she believes in. And Kristen Stewart very much looks the part and, you know, theoretically is great in everything. But what she's given to do here is so superficial. You think? I do. I do. I feel like uh, quite often the script um, written by couple people um it forces her and everybody else to spell out what they're thinking all the time yeah i mean i'm i'm of two minds about this movie because yeah it has a lot of biopic problems there's a lot of banality to it but on the other hand like i think i think stewart's great and i I, you know she is better than the material a lot of times but i think she really like visually certainly is nailing gene seberg and while she's not impersonating the voice like uh, i got the same sort of vibe about her um I thought that was really interesting. I think this is an interesting story that deserves to be told more. Like I know about it from a a documentary film that I really like called From the Journals of Gene Seberg. It's kind of an experimental film where Mary uh, Beth Hurt portrays Gene Seberg sort of from beyond the grave, telling her life story. It's streaming on Canopy right now, Mm. if you have Canopy. With a K. With a K. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, but on the other hand, like as was pointed out to me recently, this is another movie about the black civil rights movement through the eyes of a white woman, which ordinarily, yes, is is, I find super annoying. But at the same time, it's like, well, this is a thing that really happened. And this is a thing where she paid a steep price for being an ally. She never worked again. Yeah. like And y- died young. She she committed suicide. She was sort of hounded by, by J. Edgar Hoover. And like, you know, th- this, they, they got this LA gossip columnist, Joyce Haber to run this item that she was like pregnant with a black Panther and it wasn't true. And she miscarried and, you know, like all this awful shit happened to her because of the government. And, and like, it, it wasn't until years later that through the freedom of information act, we found out about COINTELPRO and, and like all these activists that they, you know, hounded and and harassed through thoroughly, you know, horrifying means. So, uh, you know, I like I'm glad this movie exists, and I think that Stewart makes it worth watching. But I obviously wish it were better in a lot of ways. I, you know, I, I I do like the fact that they that they it is about this very specific chunk in her life, and they'll they'll allude to like you know the beginning of her career. I mean. You know, what a metaphor. Like, she was literally set on fire in her first movie <laughs> playing Joan of Arc right. for Otto Preminger. Um, and that's how the film begins. Exactly. Right? And but, you, you see her, like, reading the script for Paint Your Wagon and yes. thinking, like, oh, I don't want to do a musical. <laughs> <laughs> they leave out her affair with Clint Eastwood on the set of that film. Um, but then, like, you get, like, this... There's this whole unnecessary Jack O'Connell as a sympathetic FBI guy character, and then an even less essential Margaret Qualley as his wife. Right. Like, what are they? Like, is he just there to be the good cop compared to Vince Vaughn? Or like, so it's, it's here's pointless. my thought with that is that it that whole subplot yeah. of him becoming increasingly fascinated by her it kind of skims the surface of an interesting idea yeah right like is he truly obsessed with her sure is he is he on the verge of like ruining his own marriage over this is he trying to fascination save her, yeah. um is he trying to save her is he is he overstepping his bounds and doing his job that's all really interesting potentially and they just sort of like dip a toe in that and then yeah. walk away so I think as far as his presence it could have made a whole lot more sense sure. theoretically and also like it, it's that thing where is this guy even real or do they make it up mm-hmm. you know and it's like if it is real 
they are not portraying it in a way that I buy it, you know? Because so, he does get so conflicted and so Yeah, like it it, it, it it plays so much like a fake sort of screenwriter thing. A device. That, the device, exactly. He's our conduit. <laughs> like, I literally have no idea if this FBI agent ever existed, mm-hmm. if he's really part of the story or just something they made up. But even if he is real, it plays like something they made up. Right, and then the, uh, there's a thing, there's a, a, a conversation that occurs at the end. Yeah. It kind of ties everything up n- neatly. Where you're like, oh, come There's on. no way this happened. And yeah, and, and Margaret Qualley gets a lot less to do and she is just kind of the wife and she is just there to be outraged at his increasing absenteeism at home. Um, I came out humming the costumes (laughs) as you would say, Alonzo. Um, And we were talking earlier about how, how important clothes are. So Michael Mm. Wilkinson did the costume design on this. The clothes are perfect. Like, and she, and she's got that like really slim pixie like body and the hair. And and Mm. so she can wear all these like cute little mod mini dresses and just everything is perfect on her. I want, you know, and then also the house she lives in, in LA where it's like all floor to ceiling glass and it's everything like the, the production design and the props and the clothes are all perfect. And besides Stuart, I think there's some good performances. I like Anthony Mackie Mm -hmm. in this. I like Zazie Beetz. Oh, right. You know, I, I, I think she's his wife. She's Anthony Mackie's wife. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I, you know, I, I am probably kinder to this movie than it merits, but I, I, like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in Seberg as a subject. And Mm -hmm. so I'm glad that at least there's, this is building a little bit of conversation around her. And I think that Kristen Stewart does really great work here. So I, I wind up, I, my number may seem generous, but that's where we are. What is that number, Alonzo? I give it a seven. Okay. I'm saying four. Okay. So our number is five point. Five, five, yeah. <laughs> and um, it we're not doing tomato this week, but no. I think it was low. It was like in the thirties in the tomato. Yeah, yeah, not not doing great. And uh, it's an Amazon release, so if you miss it in theaters, it will be on Prime very soon and forever. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, check us out uh, on the social meds at uh, at be fast all day Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash be fast all day. It's where we do our TV recaps and sometimes we talk about trailers and sometimes we uh, review movies that our subscribers asked us to do which is what we're doing this week we're talking about uh, 1999's Summer of Sam directed by Spike Lee so lots going on over there please check it out and uh, thank you for watching today we'll Hang see you on. later oh, oh and a la carte what's happening I got a carte? thing um, it is Janice Engel who okay. directed the Molly Ivins documentary oh, Raise Hell which nice. we talked about here on the show a few months back she's really cool she has this great history of um, documentary work. She is the showrunner on a show called Addicted. Okay. And um, has done like a lot of activist stuff, a lot of like like advocacy journalism type stuff with her with her documentaries. And she's just really cool. And so she will be on Monday. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, please come back for that. Uh, we will see you guys next time. Until then, bye. Thanks, bye.